Hello everyone, welcome to this week's weekly recap from February 3rd through February 7th. Let's go! And coming down at the Wednesdays, we started with some more Saints Row, and we started the Saints Save Christmas DLC, where we uh, meet at Future Shandy. And as we worked through, we got a little Back to the Future references, where we licked an antenna as well to get shocked by lightning, to get enough power for some things to run. After that, we head up to the North Pole, we kill some human-sized elves, and we get the North Pole, which actually happened to be a weapon. Or as they said, it is whatever you need it to be. After that, we bring some gifts and some coal around the city with a flying sled, and we end up in the final flight with claws. We finish him and we finally save Christmas. After that we continue to the main quest where we save Johnny Gat in some side scroller meeting game but followed up by that we get the buff superpower. After that as always we rescue Johnny from the ship and we get a story on how Gat is actually alive because apparently where we left off him with him on the, the Saints Row 3 he was actually kidnapped by Zinyak. After that to make up for some time with Johnny we do some Genki Ball which he likes which in result unlocks Super Johnny. After that we finish with a bunch of side quests and that we end up on the Wednesdays. And coming out on the Thursdays, we started off with finishing off every single little side quest that was left over. And after that, we continued the main story where we head to Kinsey's place and Zinyak ambushes us. We have to do some little stuff like escape with a helicopter. We actually crash at the Gankable entrance. And instead of being in the arena, we are the ones with the miniguns and actually get to shoot all the aliens. After that, apparently it turns out that Keith turns on us and the spaceship gets invaded. And in the meantime, Kinsey also gets kidnapped. After that, it, apparently we find out that Keith has been faking to turn on us to find Kinsey. So after that we uh, head into the 50 sitcom and we save Kinsey from there by killing off Cyrus. But after that it seems Cyrus is still alive in the simulation and we can fight him again. And by doing that, we luck Super Kinsey. After collecting some items to make some sort of a key for later in the game, we do a little three team segment where we choose two people each time, three times. To first with Johnny and King, we deliver protect the key that we made earlier. And after that, we take over the simulation with the help of Asha and Matt. And after that we get to go into the armory of the enemy spaceship with Keith and Sean. After arriving at the armory, we find some power armor, which practically give us superpowers outside of the simulation. After getting inside the enemy ship, we get our final fight with Zinyak, we finish him off, and that's where we ended up on Saints Row the 4th. And coming out of the Fridays, where we started off with a new game, the beautiful game of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. And now I don't mean the MMO. So starting off, we create our character, we make it a mill scout, adjust our stats, and we call him Bertharin. As for that, we worked with the tutorial, we meet Karp, and we use the escape pod to escape to Terrace. After in the hallway stopping some Sith soldiers of killing some when we explore all the rooms, everyone's been like afraid of us, thinking we want to do something with them. After that, walking around to the town a bit, we find this shop where we talk about some info regarding the, the escape pod for Bastilla, which is by the way the Jedi we were saving in the tutorial, or at least we tried. Then we ended up in the upper cantina with a little introduction to the card game of Bazaak. We of course played a few games, we lost heart. After that, we signed up for some arena fights, we beat both Deadeye and Gurlin, followed up by Ice. Ice had a little bit of a problem, but we did beat her after a little hint of throwing some grenades at her. After that, we went to uh, one of the lower areas, the lower city, we stopped some bounty hunters from some killing some guy, and we gave the man 100 credits to pay off his debt. After that, we once again head up into some apartments, but this time of the lower city. After giving a man 300 credits for the same thing as before, we also helped him out, and we stopped the commander and some soldiers to kill a person who was suspected of doing stuff, which apparently later turned out to be true. After that, we picked up a safe suit from one of the guards, and we went to the elevator down since we had to need it, um, one of those safe suits to actually go down. In the lower city cantina, we meet Kalo Nord, who actually wanted to kill us with cones like one. Two. And if you go again, he kills you. After that, we also meet a mission Vow, a little Twi'lek, who is accompanied by some Wookiee in the lower city canton as well. In the hidden back base we go to after, we trade our suit for some papers, and we end up in the sewers helping the people there, killing some red ghouls, and that's where we decide to head up and call it the Nightseas. And of course, continuing our beautiful Retro Saturdays, we continued Star Fox Adventures. Continuing the snow area we last left off, we collected three cogwheels to open up a bridge. Followed by that, we used Tricky's Flame to light four stoves, which we had to do within 60 seconds. So that, we head to the snowstorm with the Mammoth, and actually, we lose Tricky in the meantime. After that, we once again get to one of those beautiful snow scooters, and we have to go deep underground. After searching around in the deep underground, we find Tricky's door, where we have to apparently free him, so we search for his key. We find it pretty easily, and later we have to use Tricky's Flame to open up this vault, or better said, some sort of a window. This is where we find the other jail key, and in that jail, apparently there was Belina Faye, the daughter of the gatekeeper. And pretty much after that, she actually runs off, and they tell us to meet her in the cellar. 
So after heading to a few little stupid areas, we actually end up there, which apparently is the final area for the Spellstone. Working our way up towards, towards uh, a bunch of barrels, and we have to hold this explosive barrel to bring it up, and some other small little things. We end up in the Gildan boss fight. We beat him and we received the spellstone. That spellstone, we have to return it to the Force Temple. As we work through our way to there, we uh, end up there, work our way to the Force Temple, we receive our Freeze Blast staff upgrade. And after that, we place our spellstone and unlock a little path. And on our way outside of the temple, we hear a voice asking us to help her. After we solve the Krozoa spirit, we receive our earthquake staff upgrade. We work our way through the area and we find our second spirit test and completing that we get the spirit and we head to Krozoa temple. We see also the, the girl we played in the first few little bits of the game, Crystal, as Fox. He becomes madly in love and some other funky stuff. After that we head to the next area and we arrive at Cape Claw. We collect the four golden bars and a result that frees up the Cloud Runner Queen who asks us to meet her at her fortress so we do that and that's where we end up on the Desert. As for the Sundays, as I reintroduced myself to Skyrim last week, we decided to do some more modding and I also ended up doing a little test playthrough. I did try to add Wacrium, which I did manage to fix up after the stream, and some other mods like, you know, to make the game as realistic as possible, because that is my goal. So what I pretty much did is uh, I worked my way to a few things like the Vampire Quest. And by that I mean, I mean the Curing Vampire Quest, by the way, just so that you know. I did a little test run on the Thieves Guild Quest and it all worked out perfectly. We ran to the entire game without a single crash. The loading times were also pretty workable with, so I was very happy with that. A few months that we tested out was Frostfall, Hunterborn, and some other little small things. I can mostly expect myself to start over once again on the save file next week, so yeah, we'll see about that. And as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this week's weekly recap. If you like the video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Would you like to see more? Would you want to see more? Hit up that subscribe button. If you want to see last week's recap, click down on the video down below. And if you'd like to see me live sometimes, hit up that Twitch thing on the left. And as always, follow my channel to get a notification when I go live. I hope Skyrim is going to be a huge success because Skyrim is freaking awesome. But nonetheless, my friends, it's Raptinus, and I'm out. And I'll see you guys in next week's recap.